Hi, I'm State Senator Mark Mallory. I've lived in Cincinnati all my life, and I've had the privilege of serving in the Ohio General Assembly for nearly a decade. I've chosen public service because I feel compelled to fight against the many injustices I see in our community. Like you, I've seen racism, classism, and the effects that they have on all the residents of our area, rich and poor, black and white. Sometimes it's easy to spot occurrences of the injustice we all must combat, but other wrongs happen over time, behind closed doors, or in little notice public meetings. These acts of unfairness can add up to be some of the most damaging of all. Throughout the years, our economically disadvantaged neighborhoods and communities of color have been forced, sometimes unintentionally, to accept an unfair share of our community's poor land use decisions and societal burdens. In several neighborhoods in my district, the concentration of industrial and waste facilities amounts to unjust discrimination against the disadvantaged. Environmental hazards, landfills, industrial manufacturers, and toxic waste sites surround these communities. The residents of these communities and their children must deal with a myriad of health problems, diseases, and a poorer quality of life, while many of our other more fortunate neighbors can distance themselves from such problems. However, by recognizing the injustice that occurs every day in our own backyards, we can each learn to become better neighbors, take steps to heal our community, and create a city that we can all be proud of. Please join me in discovering the faces of environmental injustice in Cincinnati. Environmental injustice refers to the fact that low income and communities of color bear a disproportionate share of environmental pollution and a disproportionate risk from environmental health hazards. This is a fact because pollution intensive facilities, landfills, hazardous waste sites and other contaminated properties tend to concentrate in low income and communities of color. The areas in Cincinnati, Winton Hills and Lower Price Hill are evidence of the fact that pollution tends to concentrate in these areas. The term environmental justice refers to the principle that all people have the right to live in a clean, healthy, safe, and productive environment. I'm a resident of Lower Price Hill, I've been here almost all my life. I'm going to give you a little overview of Lower Price Hill. Um, basically it's an Appalachian neighborhood. Uh, before that it was a German and Italian neighborhood and um, during the Great Migration from the Appalachian Mountains, a lot of Appalachians moved to the city for jobs. What I'm going to show you up here on the corner, it was a, it was called City Bumper. Eight years ago they abandoned the property. And about five years ago, some of the little kids decided this building wasn't secure and it looked like a wonderful place to play. So they got into this building and they got sick and they went home and told their mom that they had been here and that all this stuff they found. But she alerted the fire department. The fire department came down and immediately things started happening without the neighborhood really knowing what was going on. And they found, I'm not for sure everything they found because that list still has published to us. To my knowledge, we don't have anything. And like, one of the things is that when the fire department came in, from what I understood, there was enough um, different kinds of chemicals in here that could have took out this whole neighborhood and downtown Cincinnati. This is the Superfund site. Superfund is a federal program that pays for the cleanup and remediation of the most contaminated hazardous and toxic waste sites across the country. Superfund sites are the result of manufacturing and disposal practices uh, that have left property severely contaminated. Usually the case is that the previous owner or the operations at the facility uh, have now 
gone out of business or in, in some ways are defunct, uh, leaving a hazardous mess for the community. When we asked what was inside of them, um, their explanation to us was it was no more than an inch thick and it was just tomato paste. Yeah, right. Exactly, and if you look, a lot of them have biohazardous stickers on them. And last time I checked, tomato paste is not biohazardous. So, they think because this is a low-income neighborhood and it's a lot of Appalachian community members that they can't read or, they, or they'll just believe the explanation they get. The ethnic makeup of Winton Hills is 71% black, 21% uh, white, and 1% Asian. It became that way. Before that, it was uh, mainly low-income white families in the Winton Terrace area uh, that was supposed to be rehabilitated to jobs that was in the factories that was located around the area. We live in the middle of two landfills and all these multi-millionaire chemical plants. Mob is what comes from these chemical plants. There's nothing but factories all up and down the street. Even a landfill. It used to be a playground right here where they tore it down. And it's a creek where kids used to go down in there. And on the side of that is a landfill where the kids used to play. The last um, statistics that I heard of was that 8.5 million pounds of toxic was released in the community and 374,000 of that toxic was airborne, was released in the air so we breathe it and everybody else breathes it after we breathe it. We believe that the uh, pollution that's in the Winton Hills area that is released in the Winton Hills area affects the families that live there. Um, mainly the children. Um, the children, so much to the point that in their early growth stage, the brain, their, uh, their, their nervous system, their kidneys and all is affected from breathing it in. It, it sort of like slows the growth rate and the development rate to where they are more susceptible to uh, different uh, illness that's in the, in the community that is caused by these toxic pollutants. A baby died in 86 when I moved down here. I went to a meeting in 99 and told him about my health, my son's health condition. He's 15 years old. His chest is sucked in from having a heart trying to breathe. He's an asthmatic and has a learning disability and was born natural with no problems until I moved in this polluted community. Last year in the neighborhood, we had approximately 30 cancer deaths in one year. These were born people? No, these were newborn babies to old people. We noticed my wife started having a lot of problems, and uh, she's from this neighborhood. She was born and raised here. If you take her fourth grade class, and there's approximately 20 girls in it, well, there's only like seven of them living now. And uh, it was... Uh, the starting point to trying to figure out what's wrong with my wife. She's 43 uh, years old, has unexplained seizures, a bad heart, blood vessels bursting in her eyes, um, osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis, bad bones, and uh, after talking to the doctors and everything, and they had no reason for everything, we, we decided to it had to be environmental. I lost my daughter that was 12 years old. She um, got diagnosed with cancer at the age of 10, maybe 10 and a half. And sometimes I think that is had a lot to do with the environment because she lived down here all of her life. We just had another case a couple weeks ago. One of the kids that grew up with my kids just found out that her four-year-old has leukemia. And right now we have a three-year-old that's on her deathbed dying from brain cancer. 
because pollution kills a lot of people. People don't, they try to say it's not connected and they can't say that this poison causes it or that poison causes it, but we know as we live here what causes it. Even though people say it don't, we know what causes you to be sick all the time and people to die for no reason. I've always had asthma problems, but I mean, I was born with asthma. But it's always like really been bad in this neighborhood, but I never knew about it until I got older and nobody ever like told me that, um, that probably most of my health problems was due to the chemicals and from all the factories and stuff that were here in this neighborhood. Manufacturing was once the core of Cincinnati's economic base and many of the manufacturing operations and facilities located in the Mill Creek Valley. Uh, historically and today what you have are a major industrial corridor running right through the Mill Creek Valley watershed. Unfortunately, as a result of years of these facilities dumping affluent and discharging waste directly into the Mill Creek, you have a very contaminated and polluted waterway. Mill Creek was um, rated like the, one of the 10 worst water systems in the United States. Right now the water is down at Mill Creek and it do stink over on Mill Creek going towards Cummingsville. I went over there last night and the water is down and it is very polluted and health hazard. The two largest sources of emissions in Lower Price Hill um, were and still are the Metropolitan Sewer District and Queen City Barrel. And both of those companies take in waste from other companies and then process it in one way or another. So it's, it's almost impossible to know from day to day what you're getting and what level you're getting in terms of air pollution. One of our largest environmental concerns down here is city owned. They've got burning stacks and there's no telling what they burn. And sometimes I, I've been sitting in front of my house where you can actually see the stacks and just watch the white smoke roll towards it and it's It'll burn your lungs, your nose, your eyes. You have to get in the house away from it. And you call them and they send somebody out, it's too late, it's done gone. It's supposed to be methane gas, I think, what they're supposed to be burning, but, you know, gas don't smell like plastic burning. In the summertime, the health is worse than for the people that live out here, and the children are more outside in the summer. You might don't want to come outside, but them children got to come outside and get air. They got to play. That is normal to come outside in the summer. I mean, I, I hate the winter. I hibernate in the winter. But the summertime, everybody going to come outside. But it's what you're breathing in your air. The chemicals, the particles, all that is health hazard. In this area here, very few people have insurance. Um, and so, uh, Trying to find a place to receive medical treatment uh, is an issue. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, and it is much more difficult for, for low-income communities and for minority communities to um, squeak in that direction because there are so many other issues that people are facing, and there, are, there is not the political clout normally within, within lower-income communities to be able to get the attention that is necessary to deal with problems. What would happen if uh, the toxic industry were located a couple blocks from City Hall? All hell would break loose, that's what would happen. Um, City Hall uh, would not even allow that building to uh, be developed, let's known operate, because of the powers that they do have, the resources that they have in handing out permits to operate and to build. They themselves do not want to be in an area where it is toxic, where companies is polluting the air. Uh, not being sarcastic, that's the reason why they don't live in the city of Cincinnati. Uh, they like to live in the suburbs. You wouldn't see them putting this facility in Hyde Park or Indian Hill. As a result of citizens' concerns about the air quality in the Winton Hills area, the United States Environmental Protection Agency conducted a study in the year of 2000. Uh, this study consisted of setting up four test stations in the Winton Hills community and a fifth station in Westwood uh, as a comparison site. What the study revealed was 
that the air quality in Winton Hills was not good, but was comparable to many other urban areas throughout the United States. The study indicated that there was not a serious risk of increased rates of cancer. The study did suggest, however, that there's a concern about toxicity. The chemicals routinely released into the air and into the environment in Winton Hills are known to affect the central nervous system, the reproductive system, lungs, kidneys, blood, and skin. Taking a lead from what other groups have done across the country, residents in Lower Price Hill initiated their own popular epidemiological survey of the health problems in Lower Price Hill. Members of the Urban Appalachian Council and its environmental leadership group work with health researchers at the University of Cincinnati to create and execute a health survey to try and establish the health problems associated with pollution in the neighborhood. One of the things that I think like to think that I've done is that we've brought more environmental um, awareness to the community. We've done different kinds of um, outreach on different workshops. Um, we just did an asthma training workshop. I did the children's health survey and I thought that was a big role in, in bringing out environmental issues. When Cooper first got started, started in the Whitney Hills area, it wasn't about environmental injustice, it was just about injustice, period. Um, we started off with a uh, development called Ridgewood, where the uh, apartment authorities was evicting 20 to 30 people a day, families a day, and they didn't have any place to go, so we was called in to help strategize and see if we could come to some agreement. That led into another issue of the type of environment that they was living in, because they lived right next to Elder Landfill, and uh, they took us out into the back yards of their units, and Elder was dumping garbage up to their back door. There was no buffer. Methane gas was traveling underground into the basements of these units. But of course, waste management denied that, and uh, residents began to monitor the uh, operation of waste management and uh, begin to notice that they was burning big torches uh, to release the pressure of the methane. Well, of course, burning in the incinerators was illegal at that time, so it was breaking the law. So waste management did it at night. In 1998, community organizations and Winton Hills residents were successful in winning a lawsuit to close the Elda landfill in the neighborhood. It's a never-ending fight. You, you, it's like the Medusa. You cut off one head and it grows two more heads. Now we got the thing with the transfer station, which is still garbage, which is going to generate more trucks and things, which the city of Cincinnati is not going to even be using. It's going to be used for out-of-state garbage. Most recently, they fought a battle to keep Waste Management of Ohio from operating a waste transfer station in the community. It's encouraging that in 1997, the city of Cincinnati did adopt a commitment to environmental justice. In fact, that as a result of that statement, the city, who in the future will be pursuing the development of its own waste transfer station, has already ruled out placing that station in Lower Price Hill and Winton Hills as a result of their commitment to environmental justice. We feel that in Winton Hills, for the factories to be located there, for the landfills to be located there, that maybe 25 years ago we didn't say anything. We felt that we were supposed to share in this. But after 25 years, our turn is up. It's somebody else's turn. I think solutions to environmental injustice are best pursued at developing effective public policy at both the national, state, and local levels. Unfortunately, what we have today in Ohio is a disconnect between what Ohio EPA is willing to do to promote environmental justice and what is suggested uh, and encouraged at the U.S. EPA. You, you can't get the regulatory people to do anything. We got a settlement after the closing of the landfill for $800,000 to make sure that the thing was remediated properly. And when that money runs out, who is going to take over and see that they do the job right? Unfortunately, in the state of Ohio, 
Ohio EPA does not recognize the principle of environmental justice and has no programs, policies, or regulations designed to protect communities from environmental injustice. The residents in Witten Hills has really came together to work very hard at trying to stop what we said we had uh, enough of is pollution and factories and landfills. At the local level, I think it's important that city governments take initiatives around land use decisions uh, and use zoning documents and zoning ordinances to reduce the concentration of pollution intensive facilities or environmental disposal facilities in low income and communities of color. I don't know if the problems will ever be solved here. It's been going on for too long. The system is stacked against an individual or group of people, you know. Fortunately, we have some good neighbors that have finally been fed up with it as well. We have to have more people that, that come out to take an interest in the community and more people in the community to take an interest in what's going on. We've discovered that talking is the way to go. There's no sense trying to bully anybody because it gets you nowhere. If you can sit down and talk with them, you can actually accomplish more. And that's one thing I'm, I'm proud to say. We do sit down and talk with them. We've seen reductions in uh, pollution. We've seen uh, the company install new equipment so it'd be less pollution. And you can tell the change in the air in just the last few years, really. The people in Winton Hills, Lower Price Hill, and other poor and minority neighborhoods in Cincinnati continue to suffer from poor choices made in our community from its representatives in the past. But there is hope. As you've seen, many of the people who are faced with injustice have joined together in an effort to improve the quality of the lives of their neighbors and their children. They've taken a stand for their right to breathe clean air, drink clean water, and to live in safe neighborhoods. But they shouldn't have to continue this struggle alone. Each of us can do our part to help neighbors in their struggle to end environmental injustice in the city we all call home. It takes very little time to make a meaningful difference. Take the stories of the people in Winton Hills and Lower Price Hill home with you. Talk to your friends, family, and colleagues about environmental injustice in Cincinnati and elsewhere. Learn about and get involved in organizations like Communities United for Action, the Lower Price Hill Environmental Leadership Group, or the Urban Appalachian Council, organizations that are working to revitalize our community by joining neighbors together to take a stand against injustice. Most of all, remember, it's when we work together to show support for our neighbors that we truly learn the value of what it means to be a community. Thank you.